Let's go on and talk about the next nursing leader from the past. This person was the first nursing professor at Columbia in 1893. I wonder if you know who that might be. It was Adelaide Nutting. Yes, it was. And uh, she began as a professor of domestic administration. It wasn't even called nursing yet in those in those times. And this is another person who really looked at statistics and research to try to create a body of knowledge in science for nursing, for interventions, what are the results. She had an emphasis on economics and we can learn from her in that we know we must make an impact on the costs of care delivery in our nation. And certainly she looked back in, in history to find out what she could learn from history. She said something very important about change, and that is one of the reasons that I've featured her today, because we're in the midst of a lot of it. She said, we need to realize and to affirm anew that nursing is one of the most difficult of arts. Compassion may provide the motive, but knowledge is our only working power knowledge. Perhaps, too, we need to remember that growth in our work must be preceded by ideas, and that any conditions which suppress thought must retard growth. Surely we will not be satisfied in perpetuating methods and traditions. Surely we shall wish to be more and more occupied with creating them. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to create a new way to help nurses be effective in the care that they delivered. And that's what the Relationship and Results Oriented Healthcare Program is all about. Here's another nursing leader for us to, to learn from. This nursing leader, hmm, I wonder who she might be. She was the founder of the National League for Nursing and the first president of the ANA. Isabel Hampton Robb, yes. Um, she was very involved in evaluating nursing ethics and making sure that our values held true. She, as being the first president of the ANA, you may know that um, the, the um, ANA's journal is the American Journal of Nursing. So we'll listen to a quote in just a minute from one of those leaders. She developed educational standards, and as you may know, nurses did not even have to have a high school education to begin with. We are now in the state of Washington, for example, asking people to, to present their portfolio of continuing ed. It's reasonable. Lifelong learning is necessary for us to be able to serve our, the public and the needs that, that approach us as we go through our lives and our professional lives as nurses. She affiliated schools with multiple hospitals so that nurses could learn how to work in different settings. She was one of the leaders of the Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing. And on their campus, they have one of her quotes on a plaque as you enter the nursing building. The Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing has a motto that we seek to be looked to for what is best in nursing. I think that's something we all could aspire to, to be looked to for what is best in nursing. She said, nurses are trusted with the most precious thing on earth, the life, health, and happiness of other human beings. I'd like to share with you a, in a, a quote that to me is one of my favorites. And at, you know, the, the nights when you're working night shift and you're short staffed and everybody seems cranky around you and there's more changes and the computer's not working right and you can't get some of your other technology to work appropriately and some of the meds aren't there in where they're supposed to be. Those are the nights where you might remember this quote. Mary Mellison, one, is one of the most beautiful writers um, as an editor of the AJN in the last few um, AJN editors, and she had this quote that I love. When you feel alone in your battle against ignorance, fear, injustice, or pain, close your eyes and sense the vibration, the music of thousands of nurses' lives, lives that are like yours, love songs to humankind. 
They are songs of peace and hope and possibility. And they are beautiful. We do have a battle against ignorance, fear, injustice, and pain. And that is something that we fight against every day in the work that we do. Just a couple more nursing leaders left, and we'll talk more about how they led us to the Relationship and Results-Oriented Healthcare Program. This is the first inspector of training schools, and we've included her for a reason. It is Annie Goodrich. She was one of the directors in public health at the, at the um, Henry Street Settlement in the tenements in New York City. She was a professor at Columbia and Yale, and she established high school graduation as minimum education for nursing. She was also dean of the Army School of Nursing. And we wanted to make sure that we included some of the folks that were involved in our armed services because your work as Army, Navy, um, Air Force nurses, you have been leaders for us in developing excellence in nursing. I know the Veterans Administration, for example, it does a beautiful job with barcoding. And certainly in serving our armed forces, you are serving a wonderful group of folks who put their lives down on the line every day. Let's look at a more contemporary nursing leader now that continued to establish standards and the actual role of nursing in the United States and in healthcare. Some of you may re recognize this person. Yes, it is Miss Virginia Henderson, and she died in 1996, but what a wonderful woman. She was the soul of modern nursing. And Annie Goodrich, the previous nurse leader, was her mentor. And what I'd like to show you as you see this, that each of us has learned from the previous nurses, that we have taken that legacy of the past and, again, developed our profession as we've moved on through the, through the century and a half that we're discussing today. One of her biographers said that she developed the definition of nurse with sufficient precision and poetry to become the internationally adopted statement for nursing. There are three principles and practices of nursing and she again emphasized the research on results. Her definition of nursing from 1966, you may recall, I certainly it's one that I learned when I was uh, in, at the University of Northern Colorado, the unique function of the nurse is to assist the individual, sick or well, in the performance of those activities contributing to health or its recovery or a peaceful death that he or she would perform unaided if he or she had the necessary strength, will, or knowledge. And to do this in such a way as to help him, and her, him or her gain independence as rapidly as possible. Wonderful, succinct, comprehensive. We have another nursing leader. This is our last nursing leader, so certainly you know Marie Manthe. Marie Manthe has been a wonderful mentor and a teacher to me and to others, and she's still around wonderfully um, administering to us and helping us learn and working especially with nursing leadership and, um, and management. She was the mother of primary nursing. And when I'm talking about primary nursing, again, this is the way that nurses work effectively in managing the cases of patients. I'm not talking about total patient care, which is what some people have thought primary nursing meant. She is a nurse educator, a nurse entrepreneur with creative health care management. And the three elements providing a professional level of nursing care that needed to be a um, available and, and were, would be present are these three things. There must be clear roles for the individuals who are caring for the patients, healthy relationships, and adequate and appropriate resources. Marie Manthe said, I believe that relationship-based care is absolutely essential for the nursing profession. If nurses are do running around doing tasks every day, they are truly not functioning as professional nurses. 
If they're not engaged in a relationship, a therapeutic relationship with a human being who is the patient, then it's not that they're engaged in nursing. Anybody can do tasks, and we need to stop differentiating our hands from others according to the complexity of tasks that they perform. Because as long as we do that, we remain very vulnerable to all kinds of changes being imposed from the outside. We need to step up to the plate and assume responsibility for managing the care of a caseload of patients over a legitimate period of time. So this is what we must do in order to make health care better, to reduce readmissions. For us to be able to have safe, effective patient care, we must know our patients effectively.